So if I add these two charges up, 0 plus 1 equals plus 1, this better be the same as the overall charge of the molecule, which it is. So your Lewis structure is correct. All right. Done with that one. Add one more example. And then that'll be it for this online lecture. Determine the Lewis structure of nitrate. NO3 minus. Nitrogen has five electrons. We have three oxygen atoms, three times six, because each oxygen atom has six of those electrons. But this time we're not, oh, this should be a plus, sorry. This time, like, I did not think correctly. Oh man, I hope I haven't been that down. Sorry, I gotta second guess myself. Um, but this time, instead of subtracting from the total valence electrons, I'm going to add because this is negatively charged. This has an overall charge of minus one, so I'm going to add one more electron. So our the total number of valence electrons I can play with this is going to be five plus eighteen plus one, which is equal to twenty-four. We have twenty-four electrons. All right, which atom should I put in the center? Well, we said earlier that oxygen can be terminal or internal. We have one nitrogen atom. So let's put this nitrogen atom in the center and surround it with oxygen. Molecules like to be symmetrical for reasons that go beyond the scope of the class. But if your molecule looks somewhat symmetrical, it's going to, I don't want to get into the details of energy and stuff. Dan's just laughing back there like, yeah. So I'm going to put nitrogen in the middle. I'm going to put three oxygen atoms around it. Each bond is two electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I use six electrons. Twenty-four minus six is going to be eighteen. It's starting to shut down. My goodness. All right. <clears throat> Let's put these eighteen electrons in these oxygen atoms, and then we'll see if we have any left over for our, uh, our nitrogen. So I'm gonna. This oxygen has two right now, so it wants six more to have an octet. So I'm going to put one, two, three, four, five, six, so that oxygen's happy. Do the same thing for this one here. And then the same thing for this oxygen atom. So now if we check our octet rule, this oxygen has eight electrons, it's happy. This one has eight electrons, it's happy. This one has eight electrons, it's happy. This nitrogen is not. Right now it has one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. So to make it happy, we're going to move a pair of electrons to make a new bond. And this is where the resonance structures comes into play. Because the question some of you may ask is, which one do I move? They're all the same. Uh, well, let's move this one. Let's just, let's just move this one for now. Right now, this oxygen that I moved the electrons from has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's happy. This was happy from before. This was happy from before. Now our nitrogen has 8 electrons around it, so now it's happy. Let's uh, write in our brackets because it's negatively charged. This is the correct answer. But there are three different answers. I could have moved a pair from here to here. I could have moved a pair from here to here. This is an example of a resonance structure. Because I have three different locations that I can choose from, I'm going to make all three possible. So I'm going to put this one on the very left. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Here's our first resonance structure. 
minus our second resonance structure. So instead of putting the double bond here, I'm going to put it up here. And then finally, These electrons have the ability to kind of just, they can make a double bond here, they can make a double bond here, they can make a double bond here. For those who are clever, there are some people that know the, uh, the 3D structure. If you were looking at the 3D structure of this, uh, you'll notice that they're all the same molecule. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that later. But for now, this there's a resonance structure in which the electrons can be delocalized, meaning that they're spread apart amongst this molecule. So we can make a double bond here, double bond here, double bond here. And this idea is very important for organic molecules because they have a bad tendency of creating resonance structures. Let's look at the formal charge for uh, two of the oxygen atoms and then the nitrogen atom. And then we're going to call that, call it a day. Double bond up here. Nice. So let's look at the formal charge for nitrogen. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, and here it has one, two, three, four things around it. So it should have so it should have a plus one formal charge. So we'll put plus one right here. Let's do this oxygen. So this is going to be oxygen left. Oxygen has six electrons in its valence shell. And here it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here it's minus one. So I'm going to put minus one right here. Let's do oxygen right. It's this oxygen. Again, six valence electrons. Here it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven again. Minus one. And finally, the very or topmost electron, OT. Six minus one, two, three, four, five, six. Zero. So if I were to add these formal charges together, plus one, minus one, minus one, plus zero, this is equal to minus one, which again is the overall charge of the molecule. I'll be posting these notes online for y'all. Well, I mean, you guys are probably already printed them out if you're watching this video. Class will continue on Monday. Um, in terms of what's going on with the midterm and details of what's going on with the class, uh, me and the faculty are still trying to figure out what's the best solution. So just be patient with us. We're we'll trying to get back to you as fast as possible. I'm very, I must apologize for I'm sure some of you guys are really frustrated. But it was, uh, yeah. Okay. See you guys on Monday.